people talk. Hello everyone, I'm Stephanie. I'm Adam. And welcome to Meeple Talk. So this mm. week we have got Quest for the End, a Tom Deschamps creation, Upper Deck publishing game. Mm. So generally what is happening in this game is that we've got a mad king who was once invisible to all sorts of poisons and potions, who then later uh, escapes his home village to uh, go to a new land where he finds that all the mystery creatures and flora and fauna are vastly out uh, maneuvering him and out powering him in his wrist distance and all the secret lotions and potions that are out there. So what he's trying to do then is he's trying to capture a lot of the villagers and do secret experiments on them. Some of the prisoners have managed to escape but they've already been poisoned and then the quest for the antidote begins. Yes, so mm -hmm. all of us or the players, anyway, could be you mm. if you play the game. <laughs> Our poison. It could? Okay. And um, they're so badly poisoned that they mm. need four antidotes each in order to, you know, not die. Yeah. And you have 50 breaths left when the game starts. You start at the apothe apothecary. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and well, he's closed for some reason. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to go elsewhere mm. and find those antidotes in the wild mm. on the board. Yeah. And there's monsters. Ooh. Yeah, so uh, mm -hmm. so that's the type of game it is. Yeah. Uh, you roll dice, you move, uh, other players do nasty things to you. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so we're going to tell you how it goes. So let's come and have a look at this board. So here we have the board and the layout for Quest for the Antidote. You'll see the board has a black track going around it. So there's 50 stops. These are breaths. So when you've spent 50 breaths, then the game is over. We have some dice. There's a white die for movement and a black die for uh, attacking monsters and or from stealing from other players. Here we have on these spots are all of the monster cards. They intersect with the various paths along the board where the characters will be walking. In the center of the board is the apothecary. All the players start there and then they need to go along the paths and collect these various uh, ingredients. So then you'll have four ingredients cards. Uh, depending on the number of players, um, you might have more or less ingredient cards. And then we have meddling cards here. These meddling cards will uh, have various effects on other players, some kind of nasty. Um, we have a drop deck here. Some of the monsters that are very powerful may drop some special items that you can grab. And uh, finally, we have the uh, various ingredients. Whoop, I just mm, pushed all these all over the place, but these are the various uh, for the diff different colors of ingredient cards for the different players, as you can see the green and the blue here. And that's all of the components in the game. Okay, and generally how the gameplay goes is that everyone is going to start at the apothecary in the middle of the village. Now, as Adam uh, mentioned earlier, we have our ingredient cards. Actually, you have a deck of 10 that you randomly choose from. So everyone's got their unique set that they need to collect. Some of them, you'll find that you'll be different from your fellow players, or you may have similar ones as we see with these two players here. Uh, they may then uh, create some conflict trying to steal from each other. How the general turns go is that uh, first, well, you've got to move because you want to venture along the paths to get to the specific ingredient locations. That's where the D6 uh, comes into play. So you can move up to uh, that certain number. So let's say, for example, I'm right here. I'm going to be moving towards or along a certain path. If at any time during your travels you encounter a monster, it's going to be flipped up and their relative strength is going to be displayed on the upper corner here. You need to then use the D10 and a roll, hopefully, oh, that was a fail, uh, roll to then defeat that particular monster, hopefully getting a reward if you succeed with a high level one. Now, this becomes expensive to do. And as, in, as Adam was indicating along the track, there's this breath counter. We are all, the idea is that we are all um, sick and we need to find an antidote to uh, recover from the grand illness, but it's going to take a lot out of us. We are going to exhaust ourselves traveling and trying to defeat monsters. So every time you want to move or every time you want to uh, try to battle or maybe roll to steal a potion ingredient from another player, it's going to cost you a breath. So essentially every action you take is going to make you weaker and weaker. 
Um, if, going back to the monsters, if you have defeated that monster and you've got some movement left, you can carry on your merry old way. Or let's say they're too powerful and you're just not rolling right uh, to defeat them. If you have any movement left, you can then do a retreat movement. If at any time as you're traveling along, you encounter another player who happens to have the same ingredient that they have actually collected as we collect, you're going to notice that this uh, darker version of the vial is going to be the ingredient that you need. But as you collect it, it's going to turn and then it'd be a completed uh, ingredient collected. If someone has a completed ingredient that you need, you can then again, rolling, uh, try to defeat them. Ties go to the defender and you lose five breaths also if you're the attacker and are unsuccessful. So you might want to be careful with how often you try to steal from others. But you know what? If there's a lot of players and a lot of ingredients are up for grabs, that may just be your best way, especially if you're running out of breaths right near the end. So play continues until, well, a couple of things happen. Either you win by getting all the ingredients that you need and rushing racing back to the apothecary before any other player does. Or if you run out of breaths, you will then die. Uh, if you do so, your player piece is going to be in position on the board and any drop cards or any loot cards um, can be stolen by any other player passing. They're essentially going to be uh, looting you after if they come across you. Uh, now, the other thing is, is that if play goes around and everyone runs out of breath, well, unfortunately, that's when the game wins. Nobody finds that antidote. So essentially, that is how it's played. So what did we think of this game? I don't know what we think. <laughs> mm, I'll tell you what I thought. Okay. So first of all, um, if I may start. Um, sure. This game, if you look at the artwork... Uh, first of all, it's very unique artwork. I haven't seen anything mm. quite like this before. It, it has a, I, I don't even know, kind of kind of medieval, kind of Halloween-y, but not quite. The story isn't quite I was quite just going to say, it kind of yeah. reminds me of some of our children's books from mm -hmm. way back when, like, uh, almost like that Wild Things and, and whatnot. Like, it just it has this kind mm -hmm. of unique, um, gritty kind of illustrations, a bit rough, but nicely darkly themed, but not in a... a grotesque sort of way more yeah. just sort of halloweenish but mm -hmm. yeah yeah so mm -hmm. i don't know if the intention was to make this a halloween mm. style game but it definitely fits the halloween mold and completely. that's completely yeah that's one of the reasons why we're doing the the uh, uh review now because perfect timing close to halloween mm -hmm. um i think it makes a really great halloween game um, but you won't see all of any of the, you know, typical Halloween things, you know, like Frankenstein monsters or vampires. Mm -hmm. and, and that's one of the things that makes it unique. They somehow skirt away from all the stereotypes, and uh, mm -hmm. but it still has that very spooky, dark, you know, um, we're, we're doomed sort of thing, <laughs> uh, feel to it. Yeah. So um, as for the game itself, um, once again, it seems to skirt along the side of stereotypes. It's a roll and move game, right? Very mm -hmm. similar to, as Steph mentioned, uh, children's games. Um, but it definitely doesn't feel like a children's game. Mm -hmm. um, and you do roll and you do move, but you also fight these various monsters and characters. Uh, uh, players have these uh, meddling cards that can yeah. do nasty things to other players. And you, it's to your advantage to use them throughout mm -hmm. the game. Um, in order to help yourself to win, you can steal uh, uh, potions yeah. from other players. Ingredients, is that? Yeah. Yeah, ingredients. Mm -hmm. Ingredients mm -hmm. from other players, which are basically the antidotes, right? Yeah. So, and uh, the way it plays out is very interesting because um, some of the loot cards in the corner are very powerful. Mm -hmm. So if you get one, then you're like, wow. So it's worth it to go there. But on the other hand... Um, if there's a monster in the corner mm -hmm. um, and you're trying to get back from that loot card and you turn up the monster and he's like a 9 or a 10 and you're rolling a d10 in order to defeat him, yeah. that might be really hard and then you might be trapped there, right? <laughs> so, so good th luck. There's nasty mm -hmm. things that happen to yeah. everybody. So it's kind of like you're all in the same mm -hmm. boat, which is the theme. So I think it's well done in that sense. Um yeah. So uh, you know what? I was just gonna say a mm -hmm. lot of the similar things because upon first inspection, I know sometimes when you do just a cursory view, you think, okay, I think I can peg this game just by looking at it. So it is 
uh, dice roll and move as Adam said, but it doesn't play like one in the sense that they try to solve the uh, issue with some roll and moves of just having being the same old and what do you really do other than just kind of go through the motions. What they do is that they add competition based on the type of potions that you may need. You may need to get some of the resources that other people have. You may have conflict with other players or with monsters. Uh, the uh, Also, too, by putting the breaths on it, the breaths limit, it contains the game so it doesn't seem like we're just going to keep going and going and going until something eventually happens and somebody eventually wins. No, you might not even succeed at all. The game may win. Mm -hmm. So they try to contain the gameplay too, to uh, shift uh, how a normal uh, dice roll game tends to play out. So I think that they're thinking creatively on how do you get away from the normal uh, stereotype. And Adam was saying to even things like the illustrations and the board itself, really well done. And also uniquely for the design and the color palette for such dark colors or such deep mm -hmm. uh, with other than the outer board, which has a nice uh, level of contrast. How do you make a darkly designed board that's not difficult to see or somehow thinks it gets somehow they visually get lost. The actual imagery gets lost in, yeah. in the board. It gets absorbed in this. this you can yeah, it has a nice look to it. Yeah, so. this game, you know, a lot of games that are dark, are they take themselves too seriously. They have this really high flute and art, but then they mm. have really dark backgrounds, and then it's really hard to see, and it doesn't end up having... Or it's too cluttered having, and... Yeah, it doesn't really end up having a good theme, but they did a nice contrast. You can see everything. You know what you're doing on the board. There's never like, oh, I can't read that, or, or mm -hmm. I don't know where I am. Um, and, and a lot of games have that problem that are supposed to be, you know dark and forbidding or whatever yes. um so they did a really good job with this and even though it has a very storytelling uh type of feel to it again you could think oh does this look like a family game or a children's game but not quite because i mean it's 13 plus yes anyone could put an age on but the writing on these cards like some of the cards are absolutely fun and fantastic to read and uh just mm -hmm. uh, i guess i'll give an example here so We've got a rabid she-wolf, and it's just like gurgling growls escape her fangs as she senses your approach. And the crazed gaze across her face twists into a smile. She anticipates her next meal. So it's very illustrative writing. And it's so mm -hmm. it's kind of neat to go through these and read through all of them. So uh, in that way, uh, you can get into the mood of the game. Whether you like the original storyline or not, it's, uh, you know, almost written comic book style. So you can, you know, whether you like that or not, or if you don't care who, mm -hmm. whatever. But it does a really good job of bringing you into the mood of the game. So when you play, um, I will say, though, uh, kind of like what I was mentioning before with the Halloweeny feel, um, it's hard to say whether because of the theme and the style, it's something that you'll feel like picking up, you know, in the middle of April, you know, as spring coming about. It may have that limitation where it mm -hmm. seems time sensitive in the sense of when your mood is right mm -hmm. to play it although there's nothing wrong with the actual gameplay you can do this at any time but some games just because of the season and the way they're styled makes you think of it more at some time versus the mm -hmm. others but i remember one thing we mentioned while we were playing we were like this would be a great game to play with just candles and it yes. totally would be right yeah it totally would be um, and one thing, other thing I want to bring out is that uh, I mentioned earlier how there's, um, you know, um, e e there's epic moments in the game, right? Because yes. you're rolling and you're trying to, to beat a monster that's got an eight or a nine and you keep rolling and you're losing more and more breaths and you're like, when am I going to yeah. defeat this monster? And uh, in one of the games we played, um, I had picked up a loot and I was stuck. I had to mm -hmm. fight this monster in order to get out of there. There's nowhere else to go. Yep. And the monster was a nine. And I rolled 27 times before I defeated the monster. And remember, every <laughs> roll is a breath that you sacrifice. Yes. So I lost so, 20, I, was it 27? It was 27. 27. Yes. So normally, if, if you're a statistics fan, it shouldn't yes. ideally take that yes. long. But that's the nature of random. Sometimes that is a mm -hmm. very valid result. And it's risky, so you kind of want to say, oh, I yeah. can't. So yeah. so so again, I think if you like <laughs> dice games, if you like you like if you like the you know the drama of dice, and yeah. I think that's one of the reasons dice games have become popular over the last year, and and this is one of them. It's come um, back. It's is, a, it's a good it's, tension it's, tool. Yeah. On the one hand, there's there's randomness, but sure, mm -hmm. there's randomness in a lot of games. But um, but if you can create the tension, then I mm -hmm. think that's a successful game, and this game does a good job with it. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, all I can say is, you know what, I I. I 
can't really think of much in the way of drawbacks other than if you're just not someone who likes dice games, if you're more of a different type of engine building or strategy type of game or just other types of games, this may not be for you. However, it's got mm -hmm. easy playability. Rules take very short uh, amount of time to yes. read. Mm -hmm. Teaching other people, easy. You just go, mm -hmm. follow the, you know, roll, move, follow what the cards say, you know, try to get your, your potions in the right spots. Uh, so, but it creates a nice level of conflict. And, and if you are into those sorts of games, depending on the type of group you're with, it's easy, uh, yeah. easy appeal. And I would say, you know what? It works in a lot of situations. Yeah, it's a great icebreaker. Yeah. So just to anybody who hasn't played a game before. Yeah. yeah. So that's our review. I uh, hope yeah. you liked it. And uh, come check out our other videos. See you later. Right. See you later. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.